So this video is about bond energy, that is the energy between atoms. When two atoms, when they move closer together or further away, the energy of the system or of those two atoms changes. So this video is all about what happens to that energy as atoms move apart or as they move closer together. So we have this energy diagram which shows the relationship between the potential energy of the system and the internuclear distance, that is the distance between the two atoms. That's the distance between the center or the nuclei of those atoms. So let's look at part A. What is the approximate energy of the system when two atoms are very far apart? So let's say we have atom A and atom B, and they're infinitely far apart. What happens to the energy? Well, as the distance increases, basically the values on the x-axis increases. So that's this uh, value. So as that distance increases, notice that the curve approaches the x-axis. And at the x-axis, the energy is 0. So the answer to part A, when the atoms are very far apart, the energy of the whole system is going to be 0. Now what about part B? What is the bond length of the molecule formed by the two atoms? So how can we find the answer to that question? What do you think we need to do? Feel free to pause the video and think about it. In order to find the bond length of the molecule, we need to find at what distance the two atoms should be from each other where the energy of the system is at a minimum. Because the two atoms, they're going to find the right distance between each other to lower the energy to as low as possible. The lowest energy occurs here, which is basically a negative value, and it's at a distance of 0.12 nanometers. So when the distance between the center of these two atoms is 0.12 nanometers, the energy of the system is going to be a minimum value. And so that distance is known as the bond length. So the bond length of this molecule is going to be 0.12 nanometers. So keep that in mind when you're working on a chemistry exam. The bond length occurs when the energy of the system is at a minimum. Now let's move on to part C. What happens to the energy when atoms are very close to each other? So if atom A and B are extremely close to each other, what's going to happen to the energy of the system? So as we move towards the right, the atoms move away from each other, and the energy of the system approaches zero. But as we move towards the left, we need to follow the curve. Notice that the energy greatly increases. It becomes positive. So when the atoms are brought close to each other, the energy of the system goes up. It becomes a positive value. Now we need to know why this happens. Why does the energy goes up when the atoms become very close to each other? The nucleus of the atoms contain a positive charge. And so as the nucleus is brought close to each other, you're going to have proton-proton repulsion. So these protons, they're going to feel a force that wants to accelerate them in the opposite direction. Now you also have other types of repulsion, like electron-electron repulsion, which will also cause the atoms to separate. But the point is this, when the atoms are so close to each other, the energy of the system is going to be very high. And so they're going to repel each other. However, there's a right distance where the energy of the system is very low and they will attract each other and thus you have the formation of a bond producing a molecule. So if it's too close the energy is going to be too high. It's not going to form a bond at that distance. If it's too far away the energy is almost zero because they just can't interact. They're so far apart. But at the right distance they could form a bond. 
And that is the bond length of the molecule, where the energy is the lowest. Now let's move on to the last part. What is the difference between the positive and the negative energy values? Because in this region, the energy is positive, and in this region, it's negative. When the energy is positive, that means that the forces, the net force is repulsive. The atoms are repelling each other. But when the energy is negative, the net force is attractive. The atoms attract each other. So let's draw a picture. When the atoms are far apart, they will feel a net force that will attract them together. And even when they're relatively close, they will still feel a net force that will attract them to each other, which is basically this region of the graph. But when they're too close, when the nuclei of the atoms are so close to each other, the net force is going to be repulsive. They're going to repel each other. And so they're going to move apart. So when the force is attractive, the energy is going to be negative, which is what we have below the x-axis. And when the net force causes the atoms to move apart, the energy is going to be positive, as we see here. Now, to see the forces visually, let's consider the hydrogen atom. So let's see what happens when two hydrogen atoms combine to form a molecule. So this is the Lewis structure of the H2 molecule. And this bond represents two shared electrons. So hydrogen has one electron. And it's going to react with another hydrogen atom, which also has one electron. And they will form a molecule. And so those two electrons are between the two hydrogen atoms, as represented by this covalent bond, a bond where electrons are being shared between atoms. Now, because the atoms are the same, the electrons are shared equally. So you have a nonpolar covalent bond. Now, the hydrogen atom has a positively charged nucleus. And it has an electron that's to the right. And there's another electron here, which I'm going to write as E minus. And then here's the proton of the other hydrogen atom. So basically, this is a representation of this picture here. Now, when the atoms are close to each other, there's going to be a lot of repulsion. So first, this electron is repelled by that electron. So therefore, those electrons causes the atoms to uh, move apart. So I'm going to call it... Fe. So due to the electron electron repulsion, the atoms want to move away from each other. Now, the protons in the nucleus also repel each other. So this proton repels that one. Like charges repel, opposite charges attract. So we have proton-proton repulsion and electron-electron repulsion. Now what about attraction? This proton is attracted to this electron. So it feels a force that's going to accelerate it in that direction, but it's also attracted to this electron too. So I'm going to call it FPE. That's the proton-electron attraction. Now this proton is also attracted to this electron. And at the same time, this proton is attracted to the other electron too. So when it's in this position, you have attractive forces and you have repulsive forces. So to summarize everything, when the distance between the two atoms is very small. That means when the atoms are very close, the repulsive forces exceed the attractive forces. So therefore, the net force 
is going to be repulsive in nature. So they're going to repel. Which means that the energy values will be positive, as we saw in the graph. Now, when the distance between the two atoms, when it's relatively large, keep in mind, atoms are small, so something that's relatively large could be only like 0.20 nanometers. So when the atoms are relatively far apart from each other, the attractive forces will exceed the repulsive forces. So the atoms will move towards each other. And so the net force, I'm running out of space, is going to be attractive. Which means the energy values will be negative, as we mentioned before. So that's it for this video. Hopefully, this gives you a better understanding of how molecules form, how to identify the bond length, and so now you know why atoms move closer to each other and sometimes why they move apart. It's due to proton-proton repulsion, electron-electron repulsion, and proton-electron attraction.